Why is showing your work in a crisis exercise important? I'm Brian Strausser, Principal and Chief Executive here at BrayPath, and welcome to our weekly insights video. A few weeks ago, Bray Wheeler, a senior consultant on our team who has nearly two decades of experience in crisis management, wrote an article for our website entitled The Importance of Showing Your Work in Crises. And Bray makes a number of key takeaways that I wanted to emphasize in this video. Um, the first one is that crisis management exercises, like tabletops and simulations, are critical ways to evaluate and enhance your response strategies and resources. They give you a controlled environment to practice, to identify opportunities, to pressure test your team and your processes, and find a way forward for improvement and maturity. We have found them to be an invaluable way of testing out plans to build muscle memory, to enhance collaboration and more. The second is that when we talk about showing your work, we're talking about more than just presenting outcomes. We're talking about sharing processes and being transparent, about explaining the reasoning behind decisions that are being made in a crisis, and that those enhance your understanding across the crisis management team, they promote learning, they build trust, and they foster innovation and inclusion. There are a number of challenges in showing your work, particularly in that in a tabletop exercise, you really don't have a chance to show your work because what you're doing is you're talking about what you would do in a crisis management situation um, in, in, within the context of the exercise scenario. But when you're conducting a simulation, you actually have a chance to do the thing that you need to do in the exercise. You're doing it for real as a part of that conversation. So as a part of that exercise rather. So the challenges in showing your work that approach can present challenges. You need to be in a simulation, but it also makes you vulnerable. It makes you vulnerable to scrutiny in the crisis management process. It, it, it gives you, there are challenges around time constraints and complexity and maybe confidentiality concerns as you work through these things transparently. But we find in doing so, it's one of the best ways to learn and practice as a crisis management team. When we think about effective exercises, we really want to maximize the benefits of crisis exercises by having clear objections, uh, clear object objectives rather. We want to have realistic scenarios that are appropriate to where the team is in their learning curve. We want to have, um, we want to incorporate technology where that's appropriate, the same technologies you're going to use in a crisis response. And then we wanna make sure we have thorough after action reviews that set you up for continuous improvement after the exercise. So that means clear observations and recommendations for improvement. And then lastly, doing this enhances um, a culture of transparency and improvement. And that's what you want in crisis management. You wanna emphasize transparency across your crisis management processes because it cultivates a culture that values candid and honest communication, collaboration, it improves accountability, and ultimately all of these things together enhance the organization's resiliency and its capabilities. That's it for this edition of our weekly insights video. We'll be back next week with another new episode. Be well. Thanks for watching our video. To learn more about how to manage uncertainty and disruption in your organization, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe to our video channel. And here are a few more videos that we've selected that will help you learn more about business continuity, crisis management, and crisis communications.